Right, so <coughs> in today's video, I'm going to talk about, I'm going to do a screen recording. I'm, first time I've ever done this, so bear with me. Uh, I'm actually recording the audio separately from the screen that you can see right now. Um, and it's an article uh, from 11 years ago, actually. In the, uh, the Sydney... What is it? The Sydney Morning Herald. Um, and the title of the article is Have Single Women Gone Crazy? Now, <clears throat> how I found this article is interesting. I've been to a speed data and I've met a guy who, you know, decent guy, a little bit younger than me at 38. I'm 46. He, um, but he, he's got his own business. He's very successful. Um, and um, he's had all the same problems and probably even more than I have, to be honest. I've had my fair share of problems in the last five years alone since um, becoming single again after being separated and divorced. But um, I couldn't believe to hear that somebody who was successful, had six-figure income, had all the same problems I'd been having and actually more, to be honest. Um, and he actually said, he used the phrase and he, and he did he did he did emphasize he doesn't like using this phrase but he said he said several of his girlfriends that he'd had or that he dated were absolutely nuts so it, it made me think well there's yeah i see what you're saying because there's no other way of actually describing it really you know some of the things he was explaining to me and indeed things that happened to me so i then put a google search in and it just so happened to come across this article so let's take a look at it have single women gone crazy right uh, while I often hear single women complaining to me that all the good men are either taken or gay, lately I've been privy to the flip side of the dating coin. Blokes who are looking to dip their loafers into the icy waters of singledom in the hope of finding a long-term girlfriend. Yes, not all men are commitment phobic. Uh, and not, yes, not all men are commitment phobic cads. A finding that not everything is as peachy as they might first have thought. Don't we know it? As per favourite writer on this subject, Gareth Simpson wrote in an article for the Daily Mail a while back, Save Me From The Bridget Jones Clones. Simpson, also searching for a girlfriend, describes single women as, quote, boring, and says that, quote, not only are they obsessed about themselves and the way they look, but all they want to or indeed can talk about is work. Interesting. What about this newfound sexual freedom that so many modern women seem to embrace? Apparently, that's not so attractive either. I also found them far too upfront about sex. That's interesting because I've definitely come across that as well in my recent five years of dating. What sort of man, it goes on to say, what sort of man wants to be propositioned on a first date? I certainly don't. It's terribly off-putting. Hmm. So just how difficult are single women these days? Extremely, says my new single 30-something mate, Rob. Quote, they all have something wrong with them. That's what grabbed my attention because I've certainly come across that myself in the last five years. And indeed, um, it's been the case pretty much my whole life, even before I got married, I, I was finding this, this exact same problem. Uh, Rob says that women these days are so complicated, jealous, emotionally unstable and clueless that he fears he's never going to find a wife, let alone a sane, normal girlfriend. I've got to laugh because this is exactly what goes through my head every time I have a, a date and or even when you even get to that stage and you sort of come home afterwards thinking, well, is it ever going to happen? Can't even get to this stage. Can't even get past this stage. Can't even get to several months in. You know, there, there always seems to be an issue. Anyway, he goes on to say, when I asked him to elaborate, he did, and it wasn't pretty. For the sake of warning all the single women out there hoping to snag a bloke, herein lies his top six. Now, this is his top six reasons why he refuses to settle down. So let, let's see what he, he has to say and see how, how this chimes with you guys out there. And indeed see if it's similar to what my experiences have been and indeed my friend at Speed Data because I, I, he's spoken at length about this. So it'll be interesting to see. Right, anyway. So number one reason, the emotionally unavailable girl due to some issues with their own worth and self-esteem. These are women who are great at first, 
But the minute I get a little closer to them and they realize that I'm actually a nice guy, they start re regaling me with all their problems. It's one thing after another. So I try and help them out as much as I can. But the more I do, the clingier and worse they get. Oh yeah, I definitely can, um, can, I definitely can em empathize with that because that happens to me all the time, even on day one. You, you just, you're trying to get to know them. You're just trying to have a nice date, you know, drama free. And all you get is, yeah, the problems that they're having in their private life. The ex-boyfriend comes up a lot and the crazy ex and all this kind of stuff. Um, yeah, um, the problems they've had with men. That's a, that's a classic one. Mental health problems, drinking problems, problems they've got at work, you name it. So that definitely, definitely is one that I have definitely come across. There's no question about that. Number two, the insane psycho stalker girl. <laughs> this is the one where if I don't give her attention every minute of the day, she goes crazy or assumes I'm seeing someone else. She misinterprets everything I say as an attack on her. She is very insecure. I often start to question if she even likes me or if she's just using me as a crutch. Oh God, I've come across this so many times. One of the first girls I dated, she was actually Romanian, but she was living in England, in Leeds. One of the first girls I dated after becoming divorced and I absolutely fancied her like, no, you know, I really did. She was just my type and I wanted to see her as much as I could, but, but working shifts, it's, it's difficult and I just it very quickly I remember the first date I had with her and I couldn't believe how well it went and and I explained to her I've got to go home and I've got to do my shopping uh, I had to go to Asda on the way home and I did that and it took me obviously some time to do and obviously I drove home and I, I looked at my check my um uh, messages and it soon become apparent on text messages um on the email uh, sorry, on the mobile phone, it soon became apparent that she she was going to be a controlling type. I, I, it was messages along the lines I can't remember exactly, but it was messages like, well, "Why haven't you Why haven't you contacted me? Um, I, I can't believe you haven't." And then there was all, "Yeah, I can't believe you didn't spend more time with me at the end of the first day. Why you, Why didn't you kiss me enough?" There was all this kind of stuff, and and I've had that with many other girls too. And then obviously, the, the, I also told her that, look, I need my time outside of work as well because I was working different shifts. She was just nine to five, Monday to Friday. I think she had Wednesday off. And, and I, I was anything but that. And I can remember saying to her, look, it's great that I can come round. I'm happy to come round, but I need a day just to go home and chill and relax. And, and she took that the other way. She took that completely the wrong way and said to me, oh, you, you obviously don't love me. You obviously don't think much of me. You're obviously not serious. And I have had that most definitely, so that I can definitely relate to that one. Oh, the money grabber, right, see what this one has to say. Number three, she only wants to hang out with me expecting that I will take her to a fancy restaurant or a weekend away every week. I once took a girl to Vegas for a week. I spent thousands of dollars at the Bellagio in one of the top suites. For the week after, I wanted to do something chilled. No fancy dinners, just us hanging out. Just us hanging out. Then I found out that she went and cheated on me with one of my friends and an old workmate, explanation mark. Yeah, well, I'm not that rich to do that kind of thing anyway, so that isn't something I've come across to be fair, but it's interesting. This guy sounds quite successful and he's come, ac he's come across that issue. Okay, wow. <laughs> uh, the flake. I think I know where this one's going. I try to make plans with them all the time and they agree, but then they flake. I was supposed to go up to the coast uh, last weekend with the girl and she agreed. Then when I tried to call her during the week to confirm everything was still going ahead, I never got a reply. I deleted my Facebook account and then I got a text from her an hour later saying, I can't believe you're so annoyed at me that you deleted me from Facebook. What a self-involved bitch, explanation mark. <laughs> Yep, I hear you on that one. This is something I have had a lot. Girls, that flake. Yeah, I definitely have had this an awful lot in the last five years. I mean, even before I got married, the same thing. In fact, I would I would hazard a guess out of all the... And on, obviously, in my case, it's been online dating and it's been speed data, but mostly online dating. I probably... 
could have had maybe as many as 50 dates in the last five years and, and that's on and off i took two year two year break but for three years i could have easily had 50 dates and i've probably only had f maybe 12 at a push maybe 10 to 12 something like that yeah about 12 and i would say at least 38 are flaked and you know i've, I've often said well if <laughs> let's say half of them didn't flake and I got to see them. Who knows? More than likely, I would have found a partner, you know, from possibly 25 extra dates compared to the 12 that I've had or, or whatever. Um, I've probably only had 12 out of at least 50. When I say 50, it could even be up to 100, to be honest. I can't, I can't remember, but I mean, I'm always, I mean, just recently on my phone, I deleted must have deleted at least seven or eight girls, all of them that I'd met on OKCupid, Tinder, Bumble, um, Plenty of Fish, uh, you know, oh, and even one or two from Speed Data, where we were, we were getting on fine. Everything was going really well. I was chatting to them. I was building rapport up with them. And they, you know, when it came to me, saying look let's let's go somewhere let's let's meet for a drink whatever let's meet for a bite to eat it was yeah yeah okay so and we made we set it up we'd even had a, quite often i'd had a phone call with them you know like a video phone call with them so they could trust who i was and i could trust who they were and then and then flake you know so many excuses i mean everything from oh i can't do it i've got to work or i'm sorry i've I'm really tired. I've been to the hospital. That's another classic one. I've come by There's all sorts of opinions, you know, insert your, insert your excuse here. Um, cars broke down, you name it. Never, never seen them again. So rather than them just being in my WhatsApp, um, you know, WhatsApp contacts, there's no point in them being there. So I just delete them because at the end of the day, not even prepared to meet one time. How on earth are we gonna, how are we gonna know? Right, so the flake, number five. So the flake we've definitely come across a lot. The jealous control freak. Got a feeling this one might, might be one I've come by. The minute we start dating, she wants to control every aspect of what I do and where I go and who I see. Oh yeah, I hear you there, brother. She immediately doesn't want me to have any female friends. Yeah, not an issue for me because I don't tend to have female friends as such, but it's actually male friends have been an issue in relationships I've been in or dating I've been involved in. Well, actually, no female friends on Facebook. I remember that, that girl I was mentioning earlier who's Romanian. She got me, she saw, she, she, she looked at, after the first couple of dates, she looked, and after we'd been together intimately, she, um, she went through my Facebook without me realizing. And, uh, she pretty much ordered me to get rid of like my ex-wife on there photos from basically my life. Of course I did, and we broke up a few weeks later. There you go. So anyway, uh, the minute we start dating, she wants to control every aspect of what I do, where I go, who I see. She immediately doesn't want me to have any female friends, which is difficult in my case because I have so many, explanation mark, although it means nothing. Yep, just like my Facebook contacts, any former girlfriends I have on there, any friends in general, it doesn't mean anything to me, you know? Um, look at that remaining girl that I've just been talking to you about. She's still in my contacts doesn't mean anything to me. She's not on there for any reason. You know, she's just on there as much as anything with guys. And I know with me anyway, I, um, I just like to feel more popular and have more numbers of people on there. It doesn't mean anything. If I meet another girl, I mean, I'm dating someone at the minute. I'm not thinking about, it doesn't mean anything. It's not a reflection on anything. The fact that I've got some girlfriends or ex-girlfriends that are in my Facebook feed or contacts doesn't mean anything. Uh, although it means nothing, and no matter how much you explain it to her, she insists I get rid of my friends. Yeah, absolutely, 100% agree with that. And finally, number six, this is his sixth top reason. Sixth top reason why uh, he refuses to settle down, and definitely this is so far very accurate to my experiences. I can't believe it, actually. Oh, well, I can believe it. And this is Sydney, so I'm guessing this is Australian-based. Wow. 
Number six, she won't change her Facebook status from single to being in a relationship. Okay, she refused to put that she was no longer single on the Facebook status. I know this is a small thing, but I know how men work. And there were tons of men asking her out and sending her lewd text messages. Instead of telling them she had a boyfriend, she refused and simply ignored it or something actually wrote back or sometimes actually wrote back playing along. Yeah, that's a big one. I've definitely come across that before. Um, and as I say, the other way, other way around where the woman insists that I put that I'm in a relationship. Um, I've had both of those happen to me. Um, yeah, they just they just want to control everything. That's definitely been my experience. Now, this was written in 2011. Have single women gone crazy? Will you make your own minds up? Um, see if any of this is similar to what experiences you've had. I'd definitely say at least three or four of these I've had a lot of. I haven't had this one because I don't tend to spend huge amounts of money. I've not got huge amounts of money, so I haven't had that one before. But I've definitely had, I've definitely had this one. Um, you know, where they, they just have, and they get clingy and they, every, you know, they want to use you as an emotional bag, really. Um, I've definitely had that one. I've definitely had the insane psycho stalker girl, very insecure, and she misinterprets everything you say. She wants you to give her attention. And when you, the moment you don't, because maybe you've got your own things on or you want to spend some time at your own place or whatever, she goes absolutely crazy. Yeah, I've had that. I've had the flake in abundance. I mean, this is the biggest one, of course. Oh my God, yeah, the flake. Uh, the jealous control freak. Yeah, definitely had that one. And certainly I have had this, not as much, but but I've had that as well. So just thought I'd um, do an article today. Uh, just thought I'd do an article today. Um, I hope this video turns out well because I'm recording this on, I'm recording the video on webcam um i just thought 2011 article from australia sydney morning herald i have to say the here's six reasons for not wanting to settle down certainly shine with me i've had i've had most of these six the reasons alone and that's me i'll be interested to see what your comments are below have you had the same type of things what, what is there anything on this list that isn't included um until the next video take care and goodbye